Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. It looks like the U.S. is beginning to prepare the public for a preemptive strike on North Korea. That's not exactly what uh, the United States' uh, ambassador to the United Nations, Ms. Haley, is saying, but it seems to be uh, clearly preparing the public for such an action. And of course, we cannot say that it doesn't go unmerited uh, with uh, Kim Jong-un and his latest uh, nuclear missile tests that he did, uh, his latest ICBM. Now, some people might, or uh, some are trying to downplay this as not being an ICBM, but as of right now, it has a range of 4,500 kilometers, can go pretty doggone good ways. Uh, Japan, no doubt Hawaii, is definitely within their target range. And when they launched this test missile, as we mentioned the other day on uh, Israeli News Live from uh, a tweet put out by RT's reporter uh, and field reporter Murad Gazdiev, uh, the missile went 1,200 kilometers into the atmosphere. Well, if it can go 1,200 kilometers in the atmosphere, I have a feeling it can go a heck of a lot further than 4,500 kilometers according to Missile Threat, uh, their website, uh, missilethreat.csis.org. Uh, um, anyway, going back, though, to Miss Haley and what she has to say, let's listen just for a moment here, some of the comments that she makes here as she has the uh, Japanese and South Korea representatives with her. Um, the United States, along with Japan and South Korea, are extremely concerned about what is coming out of North Korea these days. Um, the three of us have all asked for a Security Council emergency meeting, which we will be going into. But really, if you look at the process, we've been talking constantly about test after test after test from North Korea. But now we're seeing the longest ballistic test that we've seen so far. Then we're hearing the rhetoric of any time, any place. And we're not going to continue to just say, go ahead and test as often as you want. Well, as you can kind of uh, gather from what uh, Ms. Haley is stating there, definitely putting, uh, keeping all those options on the table. What's kind of interesting, though, as you get down to the end of the uh, State Department's uh, broadcast here, she states that they're not there for a regime change. I thought that was just a little bit odd, especially in light of the fact that uh, they're calling for the regime change of President Bashar al-Assad, and he has absolutely no nuclear weapons. I guess it depends on what type of toys you have in your arsenal as to whether or not you vocally call for one way or the other. Uh, also, though, just to kind of show that the, it's not just rhetoric, uh, that the United States is definitely preparing for that type of a preemptive strike, uh, we have Lorenzo on his channel already happened, uh, dot com South Korean military convoy loaded with heavy self-propelled artillery spotted near uh, Peju about 15 kilometers away from North Korean border there uh, just kind of give you a little bit of this uh, uh, the equipment as it's going along the road here uh, is one car following up beside these different things it looks a lot like a howitzer from the back end as they're coming up on this uh, but nonetheless, again, this is more military equipment that is, again, headed back north once again. The U.S. had actually taken the equipment there, pulled it away, and now all headed back once again. I'm sure there's a lot of equipment that's never left to begin with. And also, uh, I believe the USS Ronald Reagan is, has left one of the Japanese ports as well en route to uh, the, the area there to patrol the area doesn't say it didn't specify where in the report that I saw there, but I'm assuming uh, the Sea of Japan, uh, not far from uh, North Korea's border there, in order to kind of keep a check on what's going on. Uh, but like I say, you know, Kim Jong un has really brought a lot of this, this stuff upon himself. Not to say there's not been some contributing factors, no doubt, in the background with continued military drills in South Korea getting larger and larger. Uh, but, you know, a lot of this could have probably been brought to an end just by simply ceasing the nuclear program from the beginning. Uh, and maybe not oppressing your people to such a massive degree that Kim Jong-un has oppressed his own people, trying to make himself look like the Pharaoh of Egypt, so to speak. Anyway, moving on in other news as well, this one's kind of an interesting story that I've, been, that I've see, seen that just came out. My wife shared some of these with me. USA says Syria's, 
Syrians built crematorium uh, at prison to dispose of bodies. This is an accusation coming out by Washington. And again, I believe it's another groundwork for a preemptive strike. So it seems that the groundwork is being laid for a preemptive strike on North Korea, but there's a little bit more uh, tender gloves being used with North Korea because Kim Jong-un, by the way, does actually have nuclear capable weapons. And now with a much more ability to deliver those weapons at even further distances. I kind of thought it was funny too, though, if you think about it, because um, when it comes to Kim Jong-un and these nuclear weapons, uh, the U.S. is trying to make it look like, well, Russia should be concerned because they can really reach into Russian territory pretty deep. Kim Jong-un is not worried about Russia, and Russia is not worried about Kim Jong-un uh, using his weapons on his country. Uh, I, I think that's kind of just ludicrous to begin with, but uh, nonetheless, he still could use them on someone, and that's a dangerous situation. Uh, but there again, as many people do point out, and critics as well, and said the only ones that have used it thus far is the United States. Uh, so anyway, let's move on though. So the U.S. is uh, saying that Syria has built crematoriums at a prison to dispose of the bodies. This is some of the latest rhetoric coming out of Washington against President Bashar al-Assad. And I haven't really dove deep enough into this as of yet, but I'm just concerned that again, it's once again more rhetoric. And why would this type of rhetoric be coming out to begin with? Well, as we already know, the U.S., U.K., Jordan de deployed troops, tanks in the southern Syria, uh, Syria uh, is what the reports that are coming out. And they've got all this military equipment there, so they got to do something with this military equipment. Don't forget what uh, uh, was stated by former uh, General, um, General Wesley Clark when he said, if you got a good military, well, every problem's got to look like a nail because you got a great hammer. Uh, so that's exactly what they're doing. They're, they're seems like they're building up a bunch of excuses just to go and attack to bring Bashar al-Assad down in the presidency. And not only that, time has come to assassinate Assad, says a senior Israeli minister. Uh, just unreal the way things are going now. Uh, anyway, housing minister cites reports of fresh atrocities in Syria. Yo, uh, Yoav Galat was IDF uh, major general's responsible for Gaza's front. President Bashar al-Assad should be eliminated to stop the atrocities taking place in Syria, according to an Israeli minister in Benjamin Netanyahu's government. Housing and construction minister Yoav Galat. Uh, Gallant, a retired major general who led the Israel Defense Forces and Southern Command, which includes the Gaza Strip, pointed to the U.S. allegations that the Assad regime built a crematorium at a prison outside Damascus to cover up mass murders. Now, I, I do have to say for a moment here, though, when I see this type of uh, wording coming from a minister out of Israel, you have to understand the passions run deep for many Jewish uh, people to begin with because there was so much of this type of things going on inside of Germany uh, and other countries as well through Europe, throughout Europe that were under the, the Nazi regime control. And it's something that the Jewish people look at as saying, you know, never again. We cannot have this happen once again. And, and my own family, my both mother and father's side, thousands were killed in the Holocaust. Uh, and, of course, many of them went to crematoriums as well. So it, it touches a nerve for the Jewish people when they hear about crematoriums. But the question comes in as to whether or not the allegations are really true. Now, we've seen satellite photos that they're showing that they're alleging that this is a crematorium being used to burn the, the bodies of all those soldiers being killed. Uh, but this is something we're going to look deeper into because, once again, um, allegations are, are swirling around, and the last time they went swirling around, it, it sent 59 Tomahawk cruise missiles inside of Syria. So, and yet still never was there a legitimate uh, investigation done that allowed Russian authorities as well to be a balance in those investigations to determine whether or not uh, sarin gas was used against Bashar al-Assad's own people and whether or not his government was actually guilty of doing just that. Uh, too much information to the contrary of it. So again, you have to kind of take these types of reports with a grain of salt, but you know, never worry about it. There is a mass propaganda machine out there already working on this and 
as long as you can get the public behind you and get all the mothers out there that are that are weeping and crying for the children of Syria, uh, which there should be a lot of weeping and crying, but unfortunately, uh, it is on both sides, and I'll agree with that. It is on the Assad side, it's on the Russian side, but it's also on the U.S. side. It's on the uh, Free Syrian Army side, it's on al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, it's on ISIS, it's on the NATO coalition, uh, it's on the Iraqis, it's on the Turkish, it's on every one of them side over there that are in there fighting in this country, all fighting against one another, and it seems like half the time nobody knows who the real enemy is to begin with. When will it ever end? I don't know. Anyway, troubling as it may be, things uh, just don't seem to want to calm down. Uh, and another one too I wanted to share with you that's uh, also on uh, already happened on their Twitter page. And this just confirms the U.S. preparing uh, more and more. And that was uh, Sam Drew. Uh, Lorenzo posted Sam Drew's uh, information here that now a little base that was built just on the border of Syria on the Jordanian side where Syria, Iraq, and Jordan come together, this small airstrip was built for drones. And I don't know how well you guys can see this. It was originally built with one drone in mind. Now they have three drones that are stationed at this particular little base there. Uh, whether they're using the drones for airstrikes, whether they're using the drones for reconnaissance, whatever the case may be. Uh, I would be inclined to believe more for the purpose of reconnaissance than actual airstrikes at this point here, although they can be used for airstrikes as well. But I say that because of the fact that I do believe that the U.S. is preparing to launch a strike inside of Syria. And after we've seen the latest information that I've shared with you here, Seems like it's only a matter of time. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, Arab Tov.